Hello and welcome to the Console Trading Definitive MA Guide for MA2 in 2018. My name is Alex Hughes and today I'm presenting part one of our three-part series on getting MIDI devices working in Grand MA2. Today the system we are running is a Grand MA2 on PC system running 3.34 and an Akai APC Mini. Let's begin. So the software that we're starting with today is Bohm's MIDI Translator Classic which is a older version and a shareware version of the quite fantastic Bohm MIDI Translator Pro, which I personally use to do a lot of my MIDI stuff. Uh, the second video that we do will be on the Pro software and I'll go into a little more detail in that video on why I prefer that. But here I've already set my MIDI in device to the APC Mini and I've got my output using the Loop BE internal MIDI bridge which is a little application that you can download and I'll have a link in the description of the video and basically what that does is that allows us to have essentially a virtual MIDI output to run from Translator Classic into MA. Now the Pro version has one of these in built into the software so you don't need to worry about it but when we're running the Classic version you need one of these bridging applications. I might do a little bit of research after the video and see whether I can find one that's a little better than this because I have had issues where we can pretty much flood the little MIDI card and it freaks out and thinks that it's getting reflections or something and I'll show that to you once we get a little further in. Anyway, the procedure is fairly simple. I'm going to leave fader 1 there just as an example to me uh, and we'll begin with our second fader. So all we have to do once we've got the MIDI in is click on the little plus button to add a new translator double click and we get this little window down the bottom. We want to go to incoming, we want to click in the box and go capture MIDI and then all we have to do is push up or touch the thing that we want to touch. So I'm on an APC Mini so all my buttons are already notes so I don't need to translate those. Coming into MA the only thing we need to translate are only CC's which are called control changes which are all just the faders. So I'm going to push up the second fader and we're going to see we get a bunch of information. This is it in hex code and this is it in normal. So we can see that what it's inputting is control change 1 which is actually 49 and I know that from the little reference document that I've got printed out for the device and what we need to do is we need to translate that. But we need to make sure that we're using a variable at the end and that it's not using any of the others. Now I know that PP is a variable but I only know that coming across from the Pro software where I've got nice little drop down boxes to show you how to do it. So I'm going to change it to OO because I know that that's a variable that I can use and then on outgoing I'm going to go here and we're going to go MIDI message and we're basically just going to copy what the other one has. So I'm just going to click apply for a sec and we're going to quickly jump in and see what I've used on fader 1. So here we can see 90, 63, PP, which is a variable. So if I come in here and I go MIDI message again, and I paste that, it's not going to let me, but I remember it. It's 90, 63, and instead of PP, we're going to use OO, and we should see note on, number 1, D7, velocity 00. I'm going to click apply. Now I'm also going to link in the bottom of the uh, the video a little hex guide that allows you to work out what all these hex codes mean and I'll also explain why I've chosen the number that I've chosen of 63. Uh, I need to go 64 actually, I think 63 is what we had on the other one. So let me go 64, yep. The reason I've started with 63 and 64 for my faders is if you look up the device that I'm using, it already uses notes that run on the buttons from 1 through to 89. So I've given myself a bit of a gap. No, the last one is in fact 98. So I've started on 99, I think from memory, or 100. Uh, and basically that, that's how to do it. So we're trying to get above that. It shouldn't really matter unless we're doing color information back to the device. But we, you know, you try not to put anything on the same channel. So once that's set, We've basically got two faders working and we can continue along the stream finding other variables and doing it like that. But for now, we're just going to come across into MA and we're going to see that we've got one fader set up already, but we're going to start in the command page for a sec. We're going to go into setup. We're going to go little yellow circle, options, 
across to MIDI and make sure that our MIDI in device is set to loop BE internal MIDI. Now, if we go into remote inputs, we should be able to see a line of just exactly what we're receiving. So if I push up Theta 3, we're going to see a flood of control changes. Now while the MA understands this, it refuses to process it and it's just a limitation of the software currently. However, if I push up the first Theta, what we can see is we get a value. So we're looking here, channel 1, note 99, and that's the value. So we can see that that's set to 94. In MA, sorry, in MIDI world, the maximum value you can have is 127 rather than 255. So a MIDI fader is about roughly half as precise as uh, what a, uh, a DMX remote would be. But that's okay. We can take and extract this information. So we want to know that it's coming in on note 90. Nope, no, 99, that would make sense. And what we want to do is we want to say, we want it to control an executor on page one, executor one, and we want to control the fader. Now we can go MIDI input, we can go 100, we can go exec, page one, fader two, and now it'll control fader two. If we wanted to use the buttons for anything on the device, all we'd have to do is click one of them and see what it says. Here we can see that it's note 56. So if I wanted to use that as a flash button, for example on one of my uh, executors, I'd map it like this. I'd come in, I'd go 56. We'll take it on all channels, but normally you'd set this to the channel of the device. From memory, the channel of the device is number one. So if I set these to number one, we should have it. And then we go exec, page one. We'll leave it on exec one and we'll make it button number one. Now if we run one of these, we'll be able to see whether it's working. So I'm remembering button 56 and then we'll come across in here. We'll bring up our fader by bringing our little fader up in our world. And we'll also check that our button works by clicking on it. It should be a go button, but let's change it quickly to a flash button just so we can see what we're doing. And I'll also explain, in the little remote setup thing, we had four options with what we could do with the MIDI. We could set it to button number one, button number two, button number three, or fader. And that's how you map it. So now if we go back into executor, if we press our first button with the fader down, we should see it flashes. There we go. Now we can bring our first fader up, and if I quickly store something to fader 2, I should be able to manipulate fader 2. In our next video, I'll explain how to do it in Bohm MIDI Translator Pro, and then we'll have a third video where we'll discuss another option of doing it as well, as well as following up on how to color things on MIDI controllers and stuff. Instead of doing it across all three videos, I'll just condense it into the third one. So I'll put a link to the third video once the third video goes live. Anyway, my name is Alex Hughes. If you have any questions, feel free to drop by our Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash console training. Thanks for watching. Bye.